It has been a very long time, actually, since I sat down for a video. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mackenzie and thank you so much for being here. So it has been a cool minute since I sat down to do a video with you guys. There was a video that that I was working on and it really, you know, it was it was the worst video ever. <laughs> Truly. It was so long to produce. It was so long to get the raw footage. It was so long to edit. I still haven't even finished editing that video. I stopped, stopped editing that video and decided I'm gonna take a break because that video was horrible. Uh, I was making cookies. Ugh. This is going to end in disaster, you guys. And that's all, that's all I was doing. I was making cookies with covers, book covers on them, and it was a lot for me. I will spare you. <laughs> Eventually, one of these days, you will see the video. I'll put it up. It'll be obscenely long. It's obscenely long already. I think it's like an hour and a half. It's so long, you guys. However, we're here today in the year of our Lord, 2021. It is amazing. It is glorious. And I have decided to make some changes. So the last couple of months that I have been doing TBR videos, I was not following it. I would set up a TBR with such good intentions and I would mood read the rest of the month. And that's all I did. And it ended up getting me into this point where I was feeling Oh gosh, I was feeling horrible about my reading even though I was doing just fine and even if I wasn't reading, I'm still doing fine. Uh, this is a hobby. Reading is supposed to be a hobby and by creating TBRs for myself, when I am a mood reader, I was really just setting myself up for failure and also creating situations that I was just going to feel bad about myself for. And why would I do that in 2021? Everything else is already trying to make us feel bad. I'm gonna do right by me. So we are doing something very different. I don't know if anyone else does this. Maybe they do. I'm sure I'm not that unique. Instead of a monthly TBR, I'm doing a monthly mood, okay? Okay, so <laughs> you know when you go on to like Pinterest or Twitter and they're like, what's the mood? And it's like a GIF or there's a mood board of pictures. That's basically what I'm after. What is the mood that I'm feeling that I'm going to be in this month? How is my mood reading going to direct uh, my reading? So, the mood for January I've taken from one of my favorite Studio Ghibli films, Finish what you started, human. That's what we're doing. It's January, it's the month of resolutions, but it is also the month of putting away the past and moving forward. So how do we put away the past of our reading? I'm going to read books that I started reading with the intention of finishing in a month and I didn't. It could be books that are series that I started and didn't finish. It could be graphic novels. I moved my bookshelf. It could be graphic novels that I've started and haven't finished. I'm trying to finish some things up, wrap them up with a nice little bow so that way I can start new things. I got new series for Christmas and a bunch of new books that I'm looking forward to reading. So in an effort to get there, we're gonna finish what we started first. So if you wanna follow along and do my January mood, sure, why not? There's no, there's no TBR, there's no prompts, there's nothing. Just finish what you started. What have you been working on in the last month or month and a half that you need to finish up in your reading goals? Is it your reading journal? Is it your Goodreads? It was my Goodreads. My Goodreads was so bad. So that's the mood. And because this video will, won't really have a lot of like books that I'm showing you like, hey, these are the books that I'm probably gonna read because I have no idea, it's a mood read. That's the point. 
So instead, what I'm going to do is talk to you about some releases, January releases. So every month, these mood videos are going to be my monthly mood and then the monthly releases of that month that I'm keeping my eye on that I might want to add in. In 2021, I'm going to try very, very hard to be a conscious consumer. I want to buy books that are full of positive representation. I want to buy books with own voices authors. I want to widen my diversity with just the characters that I read about, the relationships I read about, the genres I read, everything. I'm trying to expand and grow, but I'm just really trying to better myself. So, standalones. The first book I'm going to talk about is the book that I believe is going to be January's book for Fairy Crate. So, in December, I got my email from Fairy Crate saying that I am off the waitlist officially, yay, for a singular book box ever. When they told me that, they also told me that their theme for January had something to do with Olympus. So at that point, I went to all of the January book releases to see which book might fit their theme, and I found it, and it's Lore by Alexan Alexandra? Yeah, Alexandra Bracken. So this book was already out. It came out January 5th. I think all of these standalones came out already. Yeah, aside from the last two, all of these standalones have already come out. So that's really exciting. So Lore by Alexandra Bracken is about, oh gosh, is this urban fantasy? She doesn't know. So basically this book is about these gods from Olympus who tried to do a rebellion and it failed. And so they were cast down to earth to be hunted by these families. And our main character is there, and I believe she's helping Athena. So I love Greek mythology. That was all I ever read about as a kid, okay? I was just this little weirdo obsessed with Greek mythology. Anything with Greek mythology, I read it, okay? So when the theme came out, I was very pleasantly surprised, very happy. And then this book is out and I'm like, damn, that looks amazing. So it's got Greek mythology, a female main character, and really that's all I need. So a lot of these summaries, I'm only gonna give you like half the summary or just a couple sentence of what Goodreads said, mainly because that's how I go into these books. I hate, hate, hate the blurbs that they put on the back of books and on Goodreads. Most of the time, I feel like they've given me a spoiler. Almost always. So I will read the first sentence and a half to see if what they're giving is something that I might like. So they're giving Greek mythology and female main character. I'm in. I'm down. Oh, and Lore currently has a 4.19 rating on Goodreads. The next standalone is The Quantum Weirdness of the Almost Kiss by Amy Noel Parks. This one is also already out. This one has a 3.89. This is a YA romance. And this, the, <laughs> this is very sweet. I want to read exactly what it says. Caleb knows Evie isn't ready for romance, but he assumes that when she is, Evie will choose him. But instead, he watches her have a meet cute with a new transfer student who's like super cute and good at math and like all of that. And this book really struck me. I'm really interested in it. I'm not sure why romance books, a lot of the time I feel like the premise is a little bit too cheesy for me and I feel like I'm afraid I'll, I won't be able to get into it. But this premise seemed very like realistic to me. At least something that has happened to me or to my friends, I at least could see this happening. Much, much more realistic to me. And so that's why I kind of wanted to get into it. It also has the friends to lovers trope. I don't know how much I've even ever read of that. Lovers, unless it's like a middle grade and it's a crush, you know? The next standalone is Roman and Jewel by Dana L. Davis. This one is also already out. This one has a 4.01. This one is interesting to me. So it's a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. I believe Goodreads said, what if Romeo and Juliet got the Hamilton treatment? It's actually interesting more so to me in the retelling sense that they are doing it through a play. High school actors are putting on a play of a diverse Romeo and Juliet, and that's amazing. It's a retelling within a retelling, and I'm for it, I'm here for it. It's much more interesting than the original story, and 
honestly, it's been a cool minute since I read Romeo and Juliet. I'd like to revisit some of those themes. The next standalone is The Push by Ashley Audrin. This one is also already out. This one has a 4.30 rating, which is totally cool. This one explores the ramifications that come about when mothers are not heard, not believed, and the internal questions that swim around the notion of nature versus nurture. And so this one, I wanted to stop right there. Domestic thriller, right there. Uh, we also have gaslighting, which is more than likely going to be a thing. My biggest fear, one of the biggest um, plot devices that I do like to read about is gaslighting because it, it is scary for me and so it creates an experience for me. Uh, very exciting, uh, probably terrifying, probably horrible, emotional, can't wait to read it. Um, the fact that it already has a 4.30 rating is also amazing. I'm very excited to see how these ratings are going to change as I go on to make my purchases of these books. The next one is Nick by Michael Ferris Smith. This is the Great Gatsby a uh, sequel, I guess, but obviously not because it's not written by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, this one is a prequel? I think it's a prequel about Nick, the narrator of The Great Gatsby. So that's really exciting. Uh, the Great Gatsby was one of my favorite books reading in high school. Uh, very interesting. I love Nick as a narrator. He was very... Mm, like, we were supposed to relate a lot to him, but he was just somebody else that, like, I didn't relate to who also didn't relate to. It was a very interesting kind of story and a very interesting experience for me. So I definitely want to read it, especially because the cover matches the original Great Gatsby, which I have an edition of. So that's very exciting. Okay, second to last standalone. This one is called Hall of Smoke by H.M. Long. This one actually comes out January 19th. It has a 3.62 rating. This one is about Hessa, who is an Angi. A warrior priestess of the goddess of war and has the power to turn enemies to dust with a scream so that's very exciting sounds like a banshee I love a revenge story with a female lead I truly do I have come to realize that like I do like a well-told revenge story you know like there are bad revenge stories that are like really you're getting revenge over that but there are good revenge stories where you're like justice and you love it and you just love to see it so we have revenge story with a female main character we have warrior priestess hello and it also reminds me of my favorite bits of the poppy war where like you know she has power and she has to fight for the world oh god so good so good can't wait the last one is a dowry of blood by st gibson this one comes out january 31st it has a 4.8 rating which makes me a little bit nervous that's a little bit too high for a book that hasn't come out yet but who knows this is a lyrical retelling of Dracula's Brides do I need to say more about why I want to read this book it has vampires it's about Dracula it's about Dracula's brides and it's sapphic girl yes yes that's all we need sapphic vampires are you kidding me that's all I need. So the next bit, we're going to talk about three new books that are coming out that are going to be first in a series. First one is Cast in Firelight by Dana Swift. It comes out January 19th. It has a 4.34 rating on Goodreads. It is about an arranged marriage between two people, but they think that their marriage is, you know, it's not going to save their kingdom. So they both like go undercover and then they meet each other as undercover people and they don't know who each other are and they fall in love. And did anyone else see Nomeo and Juliet where they like go and then they reach for the flower together? That's all that it reminded me of and it's all I need in my life. It is a YA fiction so I'm not sure how much it's going to lean into like their kingdoms and their fantasy and the world building and I don't know how much it's going to focus on that romance so a little worried maybe it'll be good because I do like that I did like that scene in Nomeo and Juliet and so I'm really hoping that they'll like reimagine it and it'll be great. The next one is Rise of the Red Hand by Olivia 
Chata. It also comes out January 19th. It has a 4.12 rating. It is, ooh, a searing portrayal of the future of climate change in South Asia. Um, a street rat turned revolutionary and a disillusioned hacker son of a politician. Technocratic government that sacrifices its poorest citizens to build its utopia. So we have South Asian rub. It's dystopian. It feels very cyberpunk but not in the way where the game glitches all the time more so like we're living it so that seems very exciting and it's also based around climate change which is very very peak and important the last first in a series we're going to talk about is wings of ebony by jl it comes out january 26 it has a 4.73 rating on goodreads it is an urban fantasy about a teen girl who uh, learns of her half god ancestry so we have demigod we have urban fantasy we have um a beautiful beautiful black girl on the cover it has all of the things it's everything i think i want and i'm very excited to see where that series goes so i hope you had fun here this was the monthly mood and i'll see you later bye